Hello, my name is Lauren Creighton and welcome to another episode of Orient Outreach. I'm here with Maureen Kiak and Maggie Wolozik and we are going to talk about Elo Palooza coming up and the Daisy Project. So hello guys, welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Just Thank so you. Elo Palooza is right around the corner. It's September 18th, correct? Yes. Yes. And you guys are hosting the Daisy Project. Well, you're the founders of the project. Could you talk a little bit about where that first started? Sure. Um, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, Daisy Project kind of stemmed from um, a Facebook post of a wheelchair swing. To be completely honest, mm -hmm. um, we saw a picture of a child in a wheelchair in a wheelchair swing, and we were like, we got to have that. We have to have that. So we kind of were like, how do we get it? That's going to be a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, so we hosted uh, the first Elo Palooza, and that was 2014. 2014. Um, it was a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, and we didn't quite raise enough money for it, um, but we decided to put together the DAISY project um, at that point in time. So a little background on the DAISY project. Yes. It was started by um, the, the, the three main people who started is Christy Shones, myself and Maggie, we're three moms and um, all of us have kids that have special needs that are wheelchair bound. Um, and there was nowhere for them to play or really do anything. So Christy would take her younger kid, her younger son, Ozzy, to the park and Xander would just have to sit and watch. Mm -hmm. So um, then, you know, we, we saw this, this Facebook post with a, a swing, a wheelchair swing that people in chairs would, would be able to play alongside their peers and their siblings and every, everybody else. So. Um, that, that was really like the, the start of the DAISY project. Um, we started Elo Palooza. Again, you know, it was small. Um, it's growing every year, which is wonderful, with support from everybody. Um, we also have three more board four more board members that are friends and, and relatives of, um, of us. So we're small but mighty is what we, what we like to say. Um, and we just really want to change the world and make life accessible for people in wheelchairs and, and everybody, not just people in wheelchairs, but any kind of disabilities, any kind of differences that anybody has. So that's really like the story of how the DAISY Project started is because we just wanted to make a difference and, and make a change in the recreational spaces around us. Right, that's beautiful. Do you guys have Thank a you. certain goal you're trying to reach this year with fundraising? Um, <laughs> we don't have like a dollar amount goal <laughs> no, yeah. in, in mm -hmm. mind, um, but we are looking to further integrate um, accessible, inclusive equipment in all local communities mm -hmm, so yes. that people don't have to travel so far necessarily to play. Um, mm -hmm. So they could, you know, potentially just go in their own backyard park, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and, and play. So that's kind of our goal um, is just to raise awareness and include everybody for everything, mm -hmm. whether that's, you know, someone getting in um, to the beach you know, with like mm -hmm. a Moby mat, mm -hmm. um, someone playing at a playground, someone trying to get in a kayak, you know, where you have like assists available for that. Um, Changing tables <laughs> in public restrooms um, that are big enough to transfer people from chairs mm -hmm. or maybe people in walkers, elderly people, anybody who's had any kind of, you know, either brain injury or anything like that. Um, you know, just to have the dignity to be able to be changed. Um, you know, in, in private and not in the back of our vans or on the grass. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of goals, but mainly our, our main goal and our main mission is just to make life accessible for everybody, no matter what, and fully accessible because we find yes. that, you know, people think that, that places are accessible and, and a lot of people do a really, really good job of making, of think of making places accessible. Mm -hmm. But until you live it, you don't really realize that accessible for one person doesn't really mean fully accessible. There's so many different types of disabilities. There's sensory issues, there's um, you know, physical limitations, mm -hmm. shade areas you know, that need water, shade, things like that. Um, so you know, we just really wanna make sure that, that life is as accessible, fully accessible for everybody in their own, like she said, neighborhood, backyard, Right. I mean, recreational really, spaces. When you're in, when you're not in that situation, it, those are really the things you don't think about and you take mm -hmm. for granted on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah. I mean, and it's, I mean, we were kind of in the same boat too, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. 
we didn't necessarily ask to be in the position we're in, but here we are. And um, we are just kind of tired of making do <laughs> or um, <laughs> improvising. <laughs> improvising. <Yeah. laughs> so, and I'm sure other people are too. And it's, al it's always a point of where do you start? How do you start? How mm -hmm. do you make something better? And that is not something always easily found how mm -hmm. to do those types of things. So we're just here trying to fill the gaps of, of little things. Um, I mean, we have really big goals, <laughs> you know, um, as do lots of people. And I am positive we will get there. It's just going to take us a little mm -hmm. bit longer yes. than like larger organizations. Yes. We do it all. Um, None of us take a salary. We all do it, like, thank goodness for smartphones, because that's how we communicate. We, we basically plan all these <laughs> events and, and all of our fundraisers via text. Um, mm -hmm. Emails, you, not even usually, usually text. And, um, but, you know, we just, we, we just really do the best we can, and we're so passionate about it. Um, and all the money, all the proceeds go back 100% to whatever it is that we're raising money for. Uh, for example, it could be the Miracle Field of North Oakland, or um, Kids at Play in Shelby Township is an, ad is an adapted park, or mm -hmm. Let Them Play in Lake Orion, which is our original park. Um, we have done things, we raised money to um, get uh, some of our little friends, like walkers, for example, that, mm -hmm. that maybe insurance wouldn't cover, or they have to wait too long. We've done a lot of fundraising to get um, beach mats, like she said, to give um, beach access to people in wheelchairs. Right. Um, MDA camp in Lexington, um, Camp Cavell, we raised a beach mat for them, um, raised money, I'm sorry. And what, what these camp counselors were doing is carrying them physically down the wow. beach, which is what we would do with our children. Correct. And it's it was fine. <laughs> right, it's not safe. It's and not it was safe. fine when they were little. <laughs> um, now they're 20, and yeah. they're my big. son's a little hefty. So th th these are the kind of things, you know, and, and people do, you know, we just want to make, we want to give our friends and our children and, and everybody the same opportunities that anyone else has, which is to be able to just have fun mm -hmm. and, and exist and have a family picnic or go to the beach with their friends. Um, yeah, and it's, it, it takes planning and thinking, but it's really not as hard as a lot of people think. Um, you know, I, I think that what we're finding out is the more we're doing this, the more, the more fundraising we do and the more the Daisy Project grows, um, it's almost getting... Like other people are starting to recognize and they're starting yes. to do it too. Yes. Um, so, you know, like not just us, but other schools, other mm -hmm. organizations, wow. they're like, wow, that's pretty cool. We should maybe think about doing that in our community too, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Like, I mean, we mm -hmm. couldn't even ask for anything more than that, really. Um, just for people to like recognize, like, yeah, we really need that in our community too. Yeah. How do we do it? Mm -hmm. And then they, they go about the steps to, to do it and to you know, do all the planning and raise the funds and so on and so forth. And mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, all this is hard work. It's really hard work, <laughs> but when someone starts it, like others are going to follow, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you guys looking for more volunteers right now? Are you looking for extra help? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> We're always looking for volunteers. <laughs> um, and, you know, any ideas that people have, you know, for any other, like, community projects, things like that. Um, you know, again, like I said, you know, we, we call each other, like, we refer to ourselves as small but mighty, but we do want to mm -hmm. plant the seed and grow. We do a lot of advocating for, um, I call them our people, um, you know, our, our friends and family members that have um, disabilities or just challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, we do a lot of, of just awareness and advocating because that's, that's just as important as well. Because mm -hmm. um, like you said, if, if you don't know what you don't know, you know, you don't realize, you might not think about it. But once it's out there, then it's kind of a responsibility on everybody's part, I feel, to, mm -hmm. to make it happen, to help make it happen. So. Definitely. Where did yes. the name Daisy Project come from? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a story Christy? behind that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think Dana. Was it Dana or Christy? Or maybe Christy. I don't know. It was a kind of sort of like a collective effort. We were trying to figure out like a name of what we should call ourselves, so on and so forth. And I'm not really, I don't remember who came up with mm -hmm. Daisy, mm -hmm. um, to be honest. But the Daisy is a friendship flower. And it just kind of evolved from there mm -hmm. to Daisy Project and then. And our logo is, um, if, if you check out any of our websites, our logo mm -hmm. is like a petal kind of flying off in the wind. So it's basically like, it's a friendship flower and then like we're kind of spreading the seeds of friendship and love and then, yeah, so that's nice. 
I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Thank you. And then finally, with Elopalooza coming up, what can people expect this summer? I mean, we had a, a year off of everything mm. due to COVID, yes. so we are back yes. in person. We are things, back on the road. Things on the are road happening. again. Yes. <laughs> can you guys talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, as you said, um, Elopalooza is coming up. It is Saturday, September 18th at Wildwood Amphitheater, which is like mini DTE if you've ever been there. Mm -hmm. um, it's fantastic. Live music all day. Live, yes. Wonderful local bands, live music, food trucks, um, vendors, beer, beer tent, tent um, bar, family, family friendly activities, a um, lot of really fun stuff. Sorry. It's always a great time on the hill. And, um, you know, people can bring their, their kids. Um, and like I said, just bring some lawn chairs, just sit and listen to music all day long, have some food, and just spend the day. Well, so. I think it's going to be a great time. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, we're it's, excited. It's a good time. Um, and we have, you know, like a lot of sponsors that help us put this event together. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, our presenting sponsor this year and um, is the Stacy Pearden team. And they are a real estate agent, C, um, based in Shelby Township and Lake Orion. Um, they were a previous presenting sponsor as well um, mm -hmm. when we were um, looking into hosting again Elo Palooza 2021 mm -hmm. uh, we asked and they were they were right on board yes. um, ready willing and able so along with a lot of our other sponsors too which is so fantastic yes our sponsors can be found on our webpage elopalooza.org and the Daisy Project Michigan um, on Facebook and it, it lists our sponsors there as well so. All right. Are there any special restrictions that people should know about for Elopalooza this year, or um, not so far? No, no. And it's an no. outdoor. It's an outdoor venue. It's very large. Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's uh, everything's open air. You know, lot, lots of room to spread out mm -hmm. if, if that's what you want to do. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's gonna be nice to be back on the road. On the road again. You gotta fix it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sounds great. <laughs> sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And thank you guys again for joining us today on Orient Outreach. That yes. is going to conclude our episode today. So Maggie, Maureen, thank you again for joining me. Thank and you. And have a great night.